All right, lesson 19, collision detection. Do this inside the draw loop, drag the is touching block into the if. All right, is touching. If. And change sprite to bunny and target to dinner. So. Bunny dinner. Run it. There they go. And there goes the dinner. Yay. So let's just look at this real quick. Backdrop was created. Rabbit bunny was created going three. Robot was created going minus three. So this way, dinner was created. The stew going three. So it was going with them. So when the bunny is touching the dinner, the bunny velocity stops, the dinner velocity stops, the robot velocity stops, and then the animation switches from stew to just bowl, and that's it. Okay, the blender should only turn on when the apple touches it. Start this over. You will need to draw, drag two blocks into the workspace. Okay. All right. So we need the blender to not shake until the apple touches it. So two blocks into the workspace. I'm guessing one is an if, right? If <clears throat> if <clears throat> Apple is touching Blender. Then the blender does this. There it is. Cool. So if the apple test touching the blender, then the blender does its shake and bake. Okay, the balloon is popping before the tech touches it. You can use the debug block to get more information. Run the code, use the arrows, and we see it pops beforehand. Add the code below. Bug, balloon debug false to balloon debug true. So we're gonna just change this from false to true. All right, now we can see the area of the balloon is here, right? <clears throat> so when the tack goes into this area, that's when it's popping. So that's the problem. And that's it. Okay, debug is touching. Okay, the bunny sprite should change to a new animation when it touches the sun sprite. Figure out why the bunny doesn't react to the collision. Modify the code so that the collision is detected within the draw loop. All right. I can see the problem is right here. If sun is touching the bunny, set animation to happy. So we have it. 
but it's not in the draw loop. I think that's all it is. So if we move this here, right, so it's redrawing, 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 and then once it finally does touch, then the bunny should switch to happy bunny. Let's see if that happens. Come on, bunny. There we go. So again, it was not, the if statement was not in the function. That's all. Circle colliders. Okay. Use set collider to change the collider of each sprite to circle. Let's find this collider. Sprite, bronze coin. Okay, coin one. Right now it's set to rectangle. Let's change that to circle. All right, we got one circle here and one rectangle there. So we need to switch that up for our second coin. So grab the collider, coin two, and again, circle, reset, run, and there they are. Okay, rainbow horse. When the rainbow touches the horse, it should turn into a unicorn. Add the code that changes the horse's horse sprite's appearance into a unicorn when the rainbow touches it. So that's that if. If. And then the is touching. If or if rainbow is touching horse, then we set the animation of the horse to unicorn right so we're just tell basically writing a sentence reset run yay how nice all right done deal collider at angle Angle the collider to fit the rolling pin. Set collider can take more parameters than just the shape. It can also take parameters to specify the X, Y offset. Okay. Use set collider with six parameters. All right. Set Collider. Roller. Roller! And then we'll change and add these parameters. There's all six, the rectangle. And then these ones. All right, let's check it out. Zero, 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 zero. Let's see what happens. All right, that is clearly way too small. 
So let's try 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. Where's that? That's still way too small. Hover over the set collider block. Okay. Type offset, offset, with radius, height, rotation, offset. Oh, this is going to be a mess. So the X offset, the Y offset, the width, the radius, the height, and the rotation. All right, let's see. Right here, the rotation is like 45 degrees, so we'll change this to 45. All right, that's a little bit better. Now let's mess with the height, which will be the next one over. Um, what is that about? 100? Let's try 100. Not big enough. 200. Alright, I need to rotate a little bit more this way. So let's try 35. Alright, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Okay. The height, the width, so the width here is the one, two, three, fourth one in. One, two, three, fourth one in. Let's try 50. Reset, run. Oh, that's getting very close. Okay, offset would be off the X and Y. I think we don't need that. I don't think we need anything. Let's try zero and zero. Reset, run. That's pretty good. Maybe rotate it the tiniest bit. Ooh, yeah. And then maybe shrink it the height down a little bit. 190, 180, oh there we go, and then instead of 50 let's go 45, that's pretty good, try 40. Alright, let's try 35. Ooh, there we go. So now we are right on top of the collider. So anytime it goes near this box, that's where it's going to collide. That's pretty good. Debug, add points on collision. Games often give you points when two sprites touch. This program does that, but notice what happens to the score when the sprites continue to touch. Your challenge is to get it so only one point is scored. There are multiple ways to do this, but the easiest way is to move one or both sprites to a different location right when the score increases. Read and run the code to understand how it works and what's going on. Identify the line of code that increases the score. Add an additional line of code so that at least one sprite moves to a new random location. All right. So, when you look here, if the ghost is touching the coin, the points go up by one.
Oh, look, you see the points are going up, are counting up like crazy right here. So, all we have to do in here, this if ghost is touching the coin, the point goes up by one, and then we want the, um, the coin to move, right? So, sprites, math, math. Sprite X. No, that's not what we want. Sprite X equals. Okay, this is a coin. Coib. Coin. All right. Coin X equals. So that would be this way. And then we'll do that random number. Between 1 and 400. Now let's do 10 and let's do 10 and 390. All right, so it gives it a little bit a little bit of edge here. 10 and 390. Remember our board is 400, 0 to 400. So the X, when you touch the coin, is going to move somewhere along between 10 and 390. And then the same with the Y. Y coin random number and again we'll go 10 between 10 and 390 10 and 390 okay reset run okay come on move it there we go it moved it it moved it and see the, the points are going up by one now Cool. So we're actually uh, getting into some real programming now. Make sure you understand what happened here, okay?